Testing one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking at Leviticus 23, verse 15 through 22. Yes, we're talking about the Feast of Weeks. Right now, we've already covered verses 15 and 16, where we calculated the time, we made sure it met all of those requirements. But now, let's go on to 17. It says, Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. You have to understand a lot is going on when you read the book of Leviticus. That you have to understand both that it really did happen. And there was living people that lived through this stuff. We have to understand the spiritual meaning too as well we have to understand the spiritual meaning plus that it really happened and so as we go through these I, I i almost feel like i can ignore the material like when it's talking about bread here for instance we know he's making bread this is this is like when you read over here in the um esv we got over here let's see what it says you shall bring from your dwelling places two loaves of bread to be waved. Yeah, so we, we, I think throughout this we can ignore this and try to concentrate on the spiritual meaning because we, we, we found a key for bread. You know, everybody take a moment and think what does bread mean? We've always understood, at least I have, always understood that bread is associated with the Word of God. The bread um, is the Word of God. So, let's see if we, what else we can pull out of here. Made by two, two tenths of an ephah. Now, that's talking about a precise measurement there. He's telling you exactly how much to, to make. They shall be a fine flour, and they shall be baking with leaven. Now, to try to understand some of these spiritual meanings out of this, you, you have the bread of life, which is the word of God, made of two-tenths of an ephod. So it's telling you a certain amount of bread to bring, a certain amount of bread. And they shall be a fine flour. Okay, now I don't know what fine flour, I don't have, a, um, I don't have one for fine flour. Um, and they shall be bacon, baked with leaven. And we know that leaven is um, doctrine. We know that leaven is is church doctrine to be specific. It's as om almost as if he's telling the people making this offering to um, bring the word. To bring the word, not only just reading the word like we normally do at uh, holy convocations. Most convocations you read straight out of the Bible. Tabernacles, yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be reading straight out of the Bible. Unleavened bread, you're not even, you shouldn't even be allowed to talk about the Bible during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's a week long. This one, on the other hand, he said to bring with leaven, like what I'm doing here. You know what I'm saying? This what I'm doing here is leaven, where I'm taking the word of God, the pure lump that you're looking at on the screen, and I am adding my words to it. That is what I've always thought leavening was. And for like the feast of unleavened bread and for the um we try to, you know, we don't. That's why we say the only, we don't even talk because anything we talk about dealing with the Bible is going to be, you know, adding this leaven to it. So we try to be quiet. But it seems like he's saying on on the feast of weeks on this particular day you're supposed to bring it. This is the preaching day. This is a day of preaching. This is a day, you know, you get out there and say, you know, um, this is what I have experienced over the last so and so amount of time probably a year because you do it every year and um 
But let's go on. Let's see what else we can pull out of this scripture before we leaven too much. They shall be a fine flour and they shall be baked with leaven as first fruits of the Lord. First fruits. First fruits meaning, okay, you've done a lot of work so far. You have. You've planted. You've, I mean, I ain't going to tell you. I don't know if all, everybody's um, spiritual walk involves agriculture, but you've, you, you still have kind of come a long way. You've started back there maybe in tabernacles uh, or atonement day or something like that and then you've come around through the spring feast and now this one is the last one making a complete year well then you got a lot to talk about you got a lot of experiences and stuff that you know you can you can bring out a lot of stuff that you've learned You know what? Let's go on to verse 18. We read it all in the King James Version. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord. With their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Okay, let's jump slam into the the spiritual meanings of this. Praise the Lord. You know, my father, we need your help to understand this. But let's see. And ye shall offer the bread with the bread, which is the word, seven lambs. Now the lamb is the Messiah. So how are you offering seven lambs? <laughs> I've always thought this was something like prayers, like like something you were doing the same way you, you would you're bringing this bread in this manner. You have to think of the Messiah now, something you have to do in relationship to that fleshly being that was here on the earth for those 30 some odd years without blemish of the first year. OK, and of course, you know, the blemish is that he had no stains and of the first year. Um, I'm 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 almost wanting to say that's talking about his first lifetime, first lifetime of his first lifetime, like his first go around, like he was he was purest of pure. Remember that you know we've lived several lifetimes here on earth, but the thing about it, up until we start to get spirit and truth, starting to get understanding, starting to get what in the world we're supposed to actually be doing and how we're supposed to be acting. Um, we've been messing things up. We've been making it worse. So brings on the tribulation. That's why we got a tribulation in the first place is that, you know, we've been bad down here and we're going to get a licking. But let's keep on going. And one young bullock. Now, see, I've also believed that that points to the Messiah. And I believe you can find videos on that. And maybe you guys can put post in the, the comments there uh, links to videos that describe some of this stuff. But I believe all of these point back to the Messiah, even the two rams, all of them. Lambs, which is sheep, bullocks, which is uh, cows, and and rams, which is sheep again. And see, now, one of the things you have to understand, you have to understand this poem that um, Enoch gave to uh, one of his children where he described all of humanity in the form of beasts of you know there, there was cows there was lambs there were jackals there was hyenas hyenas there were um, um, donkeys there were in this poem and each one of these them had a meaning You have to go back to that poem. Anyway, uh, let me go on. They shall be for a burnt offering. Now, a burnt offering is... Now, I have heard that that's when the Messiah was put in the tomb or put on the cross. That was a burnt offering. Him actually dying or being put in the grave. One and or both was the burnt offering. So, now, 
how does this read then let's 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 see we trying to make some sense of the start over and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year and one young bullock and two rams and they shall be for a burnt offering unto the lord so we said earlier that this is this is something to do with the messiah and we're doing a burnt offering so you know it just sounds like prayer to me it sounds like something to do with prayer but you obviously see i need help with it so i'm gonna go on with their meat offering now meat offering is talking about the bread it's not talking about flesh when they say meat it's talking about bread. It's talking about grain. It's talking about something other than meat. When they're actually talking about protein meat, they call it flesh. In the scripture, you find it as flesh. And their drink offerings. Now, the drink offering, that points to salvation, right? The Remember, he, we were at communion, um, we were offered the bread and the wine. Um the wine represented his blood which is our salvation and then you have even an offering made by fire now this one i've struggled with <laughs> even an offering made by fire what exactly is the offering now we, now back then if they roasted it means they actually had some stuff on the fire and it was hot and it you know you know smoky and stuff like that but this one, an offering made by fire, we've we've come up with with the spiritual meanings. Okay, we have this bread, that you know, this flat flour, this um, this meat, this grain, and now he's saying fire. What is the spiritual meaning of this fire? And then he says of sweet savior unto the Lord now that word I'm gonna look that word up okay looking this word up over here on you on Yahoo I believe but it's saying that is uh, the quality in a substance that is perceived by the sense of taste or smell and yet another one but <clears throat> when I see that I think about prayer and what the scripture says as far as incense burning and different you know smells and different stuff and it seems to um, be tied to prayer many times Okay, here's a bunch of definitions of it. It says the quality and the substance that is perceived by the sense. Well, I'm going to let you guys read through those. I'm going to skim through them. Archaic reputation. <clears throat> to relish or enjoy. We're going to jump back over here. Now... <clears throat> so we have these and we're going to stop right here in 18 we're going to um, pick back up at 19 so we're, we're trying to get the spiritual meanings out of these words and, and you could go in and use the other translations too but now I do not want to take anything from the spiritual meaning I don't want to take anything from the spiritual meaning I mean not the spiritual because that's what we've been talking about I don't want to take anything from the material meaning of any of these now what is it actually saying materially okay you got two two loaves of bread that you're gonna get and you're gonna take them and you're gonna, gonna give it to the priest they're gonna, they're gonna wave them when they say the wave you're gonna give it to the priest these will be baked with leaven unlike the feast of unleavened bread these are actually gonna be fluffy loaves of bread it's gonna be similar to you know soft bread that you would that you that we're used to okay now thing is when you get to 18 you know he's act, he's actually talking about seven lambs and uh, you know of a year with that this is eventual guys when you listen to the beginning parts of Leviticus 23 it starts telling you about how the offerings and stuff is supposed to work and it also uh, tells you what is the substitute for what having seven bulls that you can sacrifice at one time is kind of like I, I don't want to say the goal but 
you don't start off there you kind of start off with bread actually you know when you don't have anything else you start off and then you work your way up through birds and then sheep and goats and then before you start getting into cattle is my point but you know this there is some sacrifice here okay but let's go on and you see down here you have the bread and the meat uh, bread and the wine so this is it's kind of like a communion deal where you have the the uh, bread and the wine um the Messiah is involved talking to, you know talking about lambs and rams um, but I was trying to give the materialistic meaning of it yeah well it's it's like I said you have to re uh, read or listen to the book of the whole book of Leviticus in particularly the first part where he's telling us how to sacrifice animals more specific the parts where he tells you what the purpose of them are like a sin offering what is a um, a trans a trespass offering because each one of those you had a different animal and you what you did with the animal after you after you uh, sacrificed it depend on what kind of um, offering you were making and these are burnt offerings so they, they, they could very well be burning these all the way up burning them all the way to to pieces taking all of these animals and just burning them all but these are the priests you, you got to remember who he's talking to you know this is Moses with two million people following by following behind him in the wilderness you know yeah they had these they had this many animals say so they had a lot of them they had a whole lot more than this I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out say again this communion this seems to be a communion right here but this is where the Bible study starts guys you know this is you know part of my frustration you know there's a lot of people out here you know arguing back and forth for whether we should be keeping a law of course we should be keeping a law this we should be trying to learn how how do we you know how do we do that it at least sounds like a barbecue it at least sounds like a barbecue don't it I mean you you have all of these animals that you are you have sacrificed and now you're about to uh, use some fire to make an offering and you know you want it to smell good so you need to add the proper seasoning to it and looks like you're supposed to have some wine to go along with it and some bread this is a barbecue guys you know, when I first read the Bible that's what I thought this was I still do you know it's just hard to explain but it seems like a barbecue like like what we would do on one of the holidays like Memorial Day or um, 4th of July or something like that where we would come together as families and friends and sit around and you know uh, um, talk and, and be merry it's just the difference is you know instead of people having you know uh, whiskey and beer you know they got wine and 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 instead of pork butts on the grill they got you know lambs and you know and uh, clean animals on on the grill um, and instead of praising you know their money and their governments that got them you know the ability to sit there with their friends they would be praising the father that created the heaven and the earth hallowed be his name Hermes Academy power patience continence and faith We teach virtues.